RF man here. Today I'm going to continue my discussion on how to design, build, and test a low pass filter. This is part two of my first video which showed how to design the filter and determine the component values. So now we're going to talk about how do we build the filter and how do we test the filter. So there's basically the finished circuit. Remember this is a fifth order filter so we have five poles or five components there an inductor on the input, inductor on the output and again as a reminder this was for the 10, 11 and 12 meter bands okay they're all grouped together so here's typically the the materials that we need we need a circuit board, we need the toroids, the magnetic wire and also the silver mica capacitors okay so these particular toroids that I have here these are iron powder so they're a little different than the toroids we use in our amplifiers for example this particular one material 43 and this particular one material 61 these are ferrite materials okay but what we use in our low pass filters, because we don't need a high permeability and a high amount of inductance, we use iron powder. Okay, so they're typically color coded like this. You probably have seen some of these. This is yellow and gray and there's red and all different colors. Okay, so the question is, how do we know what toroid to use for our filter? Well, I can answer that question for you. I put together this table that shows the bands that we're transmitting on in the high frequency range, the toroids that we use, and then the permeability and inductance of the toroid. So let's start with the uh, 6 to 30 meter band, okay? So we use a T68-6, has a permeability of 8, and an AL number of 47. Okay, so what does that mean? You can see the definition up there. Okay, we'll have 47 microhenries for every 100 turns. Okay, so some quick arithmetic. If we had only 10 turns, we'd have 4.7. Okay, the other type is from 40 to 160 meters. That's a T68-2. That has a little bit higher permeability. And the higher the permeability, the higher the inductance you'll have per 100 turns. So you can see the AL, AL rating there is 57. It's a little higher. Okay, and these particular toroids are good up to 300 watts. Okay, and that's really directly related to the physical size of the toroids. So you can see there's two more listed on the bottom of the chart. Okay. We have T130-6 and T130-2. So the dash 6 is good from 6 to 30 meters. And that one can be used up to 2,500 watts. So it has a much larger physical size. It can dissipate the heat more efficiently and it will not saturate. Okay, and the second one is 40 to 160 meters. Okay, and that's a T130-2. Okay, you can see the permeability and the AL number there. Okay, so if we look at the formula for inductance, okay, inductive reactance, it equals 2 times pi times frequency times inductance in Henry's. So what does that formula tell us? Basically tells us that as the frequency increases, the inductance increases. Okay, so in the lower range here, okay, where we have 6 to 30 meters, okay, we have pretty high frequencies there, okay, and therefore we need less inductance, and from 40 to 160 meters, we have much lower frequencies, so we need a little bit more inductance. So that's the relationship between 
the ferrite that's used, I'm sorry, the toroid that's used, the permeability, and the inductance. Okay, so remember that formula. Inductive reactance equals 2 times pi times frequency times inductance. So as we increase frequency, we increase the inductance. So the toroids we need at the higher frequency are going to have a lower permeability and a lower AL rating, which means the inductance per turn will be lower. So that's the relationship there. Now there's a great website that has all the materials you need. Okay, and you can actually buy the materials in very small quantities. So let's start with the uh, magnetic wire. Okay, they have all different gauges here. You can buy rolls or you can buy short lengths, 10 feet long, for pretty reasonable price. So there's 10 feet of 18 gauge for three dollars okay that's very reasonable uh, we're using 18 gauge actually for our 300 watt and 2500 watts so I've over designed the uh, 300 watt I could probably use 20 gauge would be fine but uh, yeah I bought large quantity of the 18 gauge so it's not that critical when you wind the toroid and measure the inductance, um, the gauge will only have a slight effect. So I'm using 18 gauge, but for the 300 watt, you could use 20 gauge, and then for the 2500 watt, you can use 18 gauge. Okay, so there's the wire, available in small quantities. Okay, then they also have the silver mica capacitors. They have a very good selection here. There's 500 volts, which we use for the 300 watt low pass filter. And there's 1,000 volts, which we would use for the 2,500 watt low pass filter. And they, again, have a good selection of values. And then, of course, since these guys call themselves, let me go back home here, they call themselves the Toroid King. Okay, it's kitsandparts.com. Let me. Just go ahead and zoom in on the URL so you can see that, okay? Since they call themselves the Toroid King, of course, they have a very good selection of toroids. And you can see they're listed, okay? If you click on that, it gives you the detailed spec. So what do we say we're, we're using here? Um, for the 300 watt, we have a T68- six okay and a t68-2 okay so a very good selection of toroids um, shipping costs about six dollars per order so i built my 10 11 and 12 meter low pass filter for about ten dollars okay of course you'll have leftover materials you could build another band if you want okay so you can see, again, back to my table here, between 6 and 30 meters, okay, we use T68-6, and the filter I designed was to be used for 300 watts or less, okay, so that's the toroid that we're using, and it's yellow and gray is the color code, okay, and that's what we're going to use to wind the toroids. All right, so here's the low-pass filter we designed from the LC software. And you can see the values of the toroids. So let's take a look at the first toroid, 188 nanohenries. You can round that off, use standard values, 190. That's fine. It won't affect the operation of the filter that much. Okay, it won't affect the roll off. Okay, so that's our schematic. And now, if we go back to the website, okay, kitchenparts.com, and we want to go ahead and select our toroid. 
from the complete list. Okay, and here you can see T68-6. So here's all the specifications. Okay, it tells you the inside diameter, the outside diameter, etc. Uh, but more importantly, it tells you how many turns are required for 190 nano henrys. So what you need to put in is the frequency, right? So we said this is a filter for the 10, 11, and 12 meter band. So that ranges from 25 megahertz to about 29.7, call it 30 megahertz, right? Okay, so you can put in the center frequency, which would be 27 megahertz. And then we go ahead and enter in our inductance value, right? Okay, that's in micro Henry's. So for nano Henry's, we got to just carry the decimals. Okay, so 190 nano Henry's is 0.19 micro Henry's. Okay, and then we just go ahead and click calculate. And there it shows us for that toroid how many turns. You can see 6.4 turns and what length wire we should cut. So that helps kind of minimize the waste and minimize the guesswork. So really we only need to know two parameters here. The middle of the frequency, right, for 10, 11, and 12 meters, that's easy. And then from the schematic, from the LC schematic, the inductance value that's required. And then here you go. It tells you the number of turns and the length of wire. So, very easy. And we can just come back here. Okay, and we would cut off 7 seven and a half inches of wire we take that toroid like so and we wind it and this is what we get hopefully that's uh focusing clear enough there you go okay so we do that for each of the values using that calculator incidentally the lc software also has a toroid calculator so in that main menu with all those tabs, just click on toroid, and it's going to basically ask you for the frequency and the AL number. We now know that the AL number is 47, and it'll also calculate the length of the wire and number of turns. Okay, and believe it or not, you get the same answer. So not too difficult. Um, it was six turns. You can round it up or down. I rounded it down. And then nine turns for the 393, which I rounded off to 395 nano Henry's. And remember, we're using 5% tolerance components anyway. So a little bit of variation is not going to affect the response, the roll off that much. And of course, we'll see that when we test this out on the spectrum analyzer. And what you need to make sure you do is to wind all the toroids in the same direction. Okay, so if you're going clockwise, okay, make them all clockwise and insert them in the board so the direction of the wire is all the same. Now why do we do that? Because these toroids are very close to each other so you might get some mutual inductance and you can actually cancel out the inductance if the fields interact. Um, so if I take, for example, two coils and I measure the inductance and they're both in the same direction, I might get 100 nano Henry's. And then if I take one and, and put it in the opposite direction, if they're close to each other, they'll cancel out. So you'll get less than 100 nano Henry's. So yeah, just make sure they're wound in the same direction like that you see there all right so now we're back we're going to go ahead and test our low pass filter 
So I'm using my Striker 10 meter radio. I'm going to actually perform two tests. One at the beginning of the 10 meter band and the other at the end of the 10 meter band. Okay, so I'm using my Bird 43 line section, Bird watt meter. Since the low pass filter is designed for 300 watts, I will be transmitting as you can see there, 250, 300 watts or so. We don't want to overstress the low pass filter. Okay, and I've got a minus 32 dB RF sampler that I'm using to sample the 300 watt signal. And I'm using a GenCom, you can see there, spectrum analyzer. I got my center frequency set up. You could just read it there, 60 megahertz. Uh, start frequency, 20 megahertz. Stop frequency, 100 megahertz. So the fundamental will be 28 megahertz. And then, of course, the second harmonic is double that, 56. And then third harmonic would be three times that. So let's go ahead and transmit. Okay, so there's my fundamental, the first frequency that you see there, which is which is right here. Okay, and here's my second harmonic and third harmonic. And you can see the difference between the fundamental and the second harmonic is around 22, pull it 23 dB. Okay, so that's without the low pass filter. Now we'll go ahead and add the low pass filter. Okay, so now I've added the low pass filter in line with my RF sampler. I left my markers in place. We'll go ahead and transmit. And there again is the fundamental frequency that you can see on the far left. And then we can see the, the second harmonic frequency here. And we went from minus 23 dB to minus 57 dB. That's called dBC when you compare the two signals. And the third harmonic, barely there. So, yes, we've got uh, at least 60 dB of attenuation on average. So, excellent results at 28 megahertz. Now we'll go ahead and test on the upper side of 10 meters. Okay, so now we're testing on the upper side of 10 meters, which is 29.7 megahertz. And once again, we have the fundamental frequency here. We have our second harmonic, which is attenuated significantly. And the third harmonic is hardly visible. And again, if we go over here and we check the markers, we have basically minus, call it 52 dB from the fundamental to the second harmonic. So again, excellent results. Uh, the FCC limit is minus 40 dB. So on the upper side of 10 meters, we're good. On the lower side of 10 meters, we're good with more than 10 to 15 dB of margin. So you can see that we get the significant uh, reduction in, in the harmonic frequencies with the low pass filter. So I'll be posting my contact information under these videos. If you'd like more information, please let me know and uh, I'd be happy to help you. Thanks for watching. RF Man.